Hello YouTube, Alan back with another video and today we're going to be talking about something a little different. Another interest of mine, but normally it's video games and whatnot, and this one's a bit different. This time I'm going to be talking about space. And it it's all because of yesterday's, what I would consider historic flight of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. Which is the biggest rocket to have flown since a certain Saturn V rocket took man to the moon. So it was a pretty big deal in the kind of uh, space industry and for a person like myself who's always been kind of fascinated by space exploration and kind of, I suppose, expanding horizons, I've, I just had to, had to see it. Now, just for a lot of my viewers on my channel might not be aware because I don't really talk about space all that much, but SpaceX is a company that was originally founded by Elon Musk, of probably more famous for Tesla, but SpaceX is his really exciting company if you ask me. And they've been kind of trying to get into the market of, well, private rockets for a start, but really to make it commercially viable to have reusable rockets and something that's never been done before. The analogy being, you take a Boeing 747 or similar aircraft, and after you fly the plane, you blow it up at the, at the <laughs> upon arrival. That's what it's like with rockets. They're one shot deal and you spend a crap ton of money building this massive rocket and it, you know, it's gone. So they've been trying to work on reusability the Falcon 9 series of rockets uh, was their, is, you know, is their kind of bread and butter series. It took them a good few tries to get it right. And the first, uh, you know, they had a lot of crash landings and so on. But eventually they got the stage one of a Falcon 9 rocket to land. Back on land first and then eventually um, on a drone ship in the sea. So it depends on the type of uh, uh, f flight profile that they have. So they've gotten really good at this. They've done like, what, 20 or something successful landings. But the next step was to do the Falcon Heavy. And the Falcon Heavy was essentially to be a souped up Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 name because it's got nine motors or rocket engines in the, in, in the rocket itself. And the Falcon Heavy was going to have 27. So it's basically three Falcon 9s strapped together. You know, in, how hard could that be is, you know, say, you know, just, you know, more power. You can, and the idea being you could lift much greater uh, payloads into orbit. And so if you want to have something like the Hubble telescope or, you know, military satellites of, you know, whatever you might need to do, it, it just gives you much more flexibility in terms of, you know, what you can lift. So, of course, then there's a lot of this technology isn't just, you know, for the immediate future. You, you want to see about the bigger picture because what they're working on the Falcon platform, really, that's the bread and butter to lead on to the BF4 platform. And the BF4 platform, a lot of people may have seen because it got a lot of press, is basically an interplanetary platform based on the same kind of reusability technology and principles pioneered by Falcon. So history lesson out of the way. Yesterday was the first test launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket. I watched it live and I was absolutely spellbound. For a live, you know, I don't watch that much live, but definitely for me, it was one of the most awe-inspiring uh, live events that I've witnessed. I can never seen things like the moon landing around tonight like that so didn't have that to draw upon but to see like to see such a big rocket fly for first of all is difficult like the only ratio is something like a 50% chance that it wouldn't blow up because if there's a 100% rate required you know if, if you consider a test before you even get you know off the ground if one one little thing goes wrong in your rocket chances are it's going to be lead to a catastrophic failure so just getting it to fly is difficult enough. But they had presented this simulation, what the Falcon Heavy is going to do. And it's, that was pretty, you know, crazy. You know, it's CG, it looks great, but let's be real, that's, that's fairly far-fetched for your first flight. So what did it do? Or rather, what was the simulation, I suppose? Simulation was you have all these engines fire at once, 27 engines firing out simultaneously, lifting, and the Falcon uh, rocket taking the load up to space. So once it gets into low Earth orbit, Essentially, the boosters would separate. They would, sure, why not? They'd return back and land, you know, back where you took took off. Um, back, actually, the same launch site as, funnily enough, the uh, the Saturn V itself. Uh, they'll just land back, you know, as you do, vertical land. That's so obvious. And then the main core would, would land on a drone ship in the ocean because it needed, had to go further, so its flight profile was different. This, uh, it would actually have a second stage separation, so the second stage would continue on. And it would basically do an orbit around the Earth with its payload. The fairings would come off um, around the, earlier on the flight too. The, the fairings are just basically the kind of the cone at the top of the rocket that protects 
uh, what it is you're transporting. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and the way I see it, they're almost like a flower opening up the, the fairings thing. And then after uh, doing a bit of an orbit around the Earth, it would be, you know, shot. It would reburn a few times the second stage and, and fire off on its way to Mars. Obviously, that's what you do for your first test flight. And I mentioned briefly the payload. Elon Musk is truly both, both humorous, but a genius in terms of marketing. At least you could call it incredible synergy. I mentioned, I think, that he's the CEO of Tesla as well. So he decided to send as his test payload a... His, his personal Tesla Roadster, the first Tesla car ever built, I believe. And um, he put a mannequin in the, in the SpaceX spacesuit. And on the, on the radio was playing David Bowie's Life on Mars as the canopy opens up. While orbiting the Earth. So the images streamed back live. And this continued on for the duration of the orbit. Uh, was of a guy, well a mannequin... In a, in, in a car flying over Earth on his way to Mars. Now, normally, a test flight will use uh, a lump of concrete or whatever. Just They just want mass. They're, they're really only concerned about the rockets, testing out the rockets. Not, the, you know, because a client's not going to pay to have something on the first first rocket because they know there's a 50% chance it's going to blow up. So, but none of the, you know, it didn't blow up. Well, not that part. Uh, it all worked beautifully and, as I said, had an incredible kind of payoff for viewers. Most people wouldn't be so interested to watch, you know, the first test flight unless it was something to captivate. And certainly to get the trending. The trending on, on uh, social media was crazy yesterday. Really, I should have put this video out yesterday. Catch, catch the buzz. Uh, the Starman buzz, as, as it was. As Literally, like, I, I've seen, because I've watched it, just checked it a few times. Like, several hundred thousand people were live watching this car float over Earth. Like, that's crazy. If it, You think they would have got that for a lump of concrete? Like, and t talk about getting hearts and minds to kind of reimagine what it was like, what it's like to push boundaries. And that's really what space is all about to me, personally. Like, don't get me wrong. The International Space Station, uh, the, was it the Phileas probe, uh, the, the various Mars missions and so on, all these things are great science and engineers deserve incredible credit. But when it comes to really capturing your imagination and getting you fired up, it really is about the manned exploration. And I know the mission for SpaceX is long stated to go to Mars. And that sounds so nebulous. Oh yeah, but these are the steps you have to take. And I mean, the original moon missions were like that too. It wasn't just like, we go to the moon, oh yeah, well, you know, we build a big rocket and straight away it worked. No, no, there was numerous steps along the way, and it was all about learning from your technology, and that's what this is too. So Falcon Heavy is, of course, it's a learning part, a process to, to lead on to be a four. So anyway, the execution, as I said, the, the launch, perfect. Straight, you know, everything was absolutely perfect. This initial separation of the boosters, perfect. Stage separation, perfect. Boosters come down and do an incredible almost simultaneous landing back on land, vertical landings, perfect landings. It was absolutely, you could hear the, the workers at SpaceX watching it like going mad. And I can completely understand as an engineer, just to see your work delivered in such a spectacular fashion. <laughs> it must have been so rewarding. So then you have um, the, 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 the main core and it did return back to Earth and it did try to fire up its engines again, which was good. Unfortunately, what actually happened was the main core ran just out of juice, and it missed as such. It missed it missed the 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 the, the landing platform in C, and it ended up about a hundred meters away and kind of came in a bit hard at like five hundred kilometers and you know basically blew up. So that didn't go down. That was a bit. That was the only kind of little oh uh, what a pity because as I said for first attempt, it was almost per the simulation, and that's crazy when you're. You're talking about such high-risk technology. And of course then, yeah, the second stage went on. Funny enough, I read this morning that the second stage did wake up again and it did its final burn, burned all its fuel, which was the plan. They were actually hoping that the trajectory would send it to Mars. They've overshot. They're going past Mars. <laughs> They're going to the asteroid belt. So maybe not as symbolic as going to Mars, but still pretty damn impressive nonetheless. As I said, I was completely stoked watching it. It was an amazing, uh, it was an amazing thing to witness, and it really does kind of reinvigorate that feeling of yes, we can do these crazy things. And that's what Elon said in his interviews after afterward when he was asked, "What does what do you learn from this?" 
He said, crazy things can happen. Like, they can work. You can do it. And I think we all need sometimes to learn those lessons in life. Sometimes you can do a crazy thing. Really, one guy setting up his own company, not a government sponsor thing, and he's going to go to Mars? Okay, maybe maybe he won't in the, in the long run, but by God, he's giving it a good shot. And for that, himself and everyone at SpaceX really deserve a lot of, uh, a lot of credit. So, as I said, congratulations to everyone involved. It was truly remarkable, and I'm just glad I got to witness it. We we'll leave it there. That was enough for kind of an off-topic discussion, I suppose. Let me know if you'd like to hear more of these kind of slightly uh, different topics. Because while I tend to focus on video games, it's not my only interest. And sometimes, you know, if you want me to talk about other things, I might talk about those too. So, you know, drop a comment uh, in the comment section below and do all the like, subscribe, and we'll catch you again with another video shortly. And yes, they will probably be video game related. Anyway, bye for now.